Lord, uh, as we come to your word now, we just thank you for the way that it speaks to our hearts. And I pray that we would just be very open to what you want to say to us, that we would be led by you, that we would uh, seek to follow you, and that we would be in obedience uh, to you as well. So uh, we pray that your Holy Spirit would guide us, Lord. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this would be the third and final uh, Sunday that we are spending in the book of Numbers, and our goal here is just to look at some of the aspects of the gospel that show up in the book of Numbers. And so uh, this particular one, last week uh, we looked at the serpent on the pole, and that, of course, pointed directly to the cross. This week, it would be more of a uh, following Jesus kind of experience. How do we as Christians then learn to walk in obedience to him throughout our lives here? And of course, the Holy Spirit is key there uh, to help us and to guide us in that. Uh, the notes that we have, knowing and doing God's will can sometimes be a mysterious thing for the Christian to understand. Many times we are faced with uncertainty, doubt, and questions. And so there are lots of things about understanding the will of God that, that are hard to figure out. But it's not always that way. Not always. Many times the will of God is very clear, very direct, and actually quite easy to understand. And so it's, it's very good for us to be able to uh, focus not just on the mysterious unknown parts, but on the very clear, easy to understand parts so that we are actually walking in obedience to God's will. So today we're primarily going to focus on the clear and certain will of God. Uh, God's will is always for us to uh, follow him wherever he leads, and he wants us to walk in that obedience. But there are times that we're maybe not quite so quick and quite so willing. Now let's share some examples here of, of uh, what we're talking about. Uh, let me just share some, some examples of, of helpful things that, uh, from God's word that would be clear direction. Uh, <clears throat> let me look out at my family right now, and I would say uh, that Scripture clearly teaches that uh, children are to obey their parents in the Lord. And that would be a clear example of, of what we know to be God's will. Uh, there's no question about that. You know, uh, unless your parent is leading you into sin, then children, that, that is what your role is, is to follow in obedience to God. And part of that is, is in obedience to your parents. Uh, another example, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. Um, a married couple doesn't have to wonder, you know, is it? Is it really God's will for me to love that spouse? Well, of course it is. Uh, it is clearly God's will, and he has uh, laid that out very clearly in his word, and so there's no question about that. Another example would be uh, love your enemy uh, and do good to those who hurt you or bring harm to you and, and uh, spitefully use you, as Scripture talks about. So uh, are we to love that person who seems to us to be unlovable? Of course we are. And so you could go through the Word of God and over and over again, in so many places, find so many verses that clearly communicate God's will for us. So God wants us to follow Him. The passage that we have in front of us in Numbers uh, chapter 9 is kind of a, a very clear uh, direction uh, for the children of God, very clear direction for them. And, and so we've got then this uh, understanding and awareness that God led them. And sometimes we might say, wow, it must have been so easy for them to follow God. Well, we know from reading that they didn't seem to find it very easy to follow God. They struggled an awful lot, even though God made it very clear and, and in this case, very visible as it speaks of the cloud that was to lead them. Uh, a cloud by day and uh, this pillar of fire by night. And, and so in whatever situation they were in, they could look to uh, the sky and determine what God wanted them to do. 
Um, let me start with some helpful assumptions as we begin here, because this passage is one that could take us in all sorts of different directions. We need to just kind of lay a bit of groundwork before we uh, do too much in it. Assumption number one would be that you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, our Savior. That you, just as last week's lesson about the serpent on the pole, that you have already looked to Jesus and found eternal life through him. And so we're starting with that assumption because if we want to follow God's will, he, may, he reveals that, he lets uh, us know that because we are his children, because we belong to him. And so you have a relationship with him that you already know Christ. And if this is not the case for you, then I certainly would encourage you uh, to take time and to understand what it means to become a Christian, to, to place your life in, in Jesus' hands and to, to follow him and to walk with him. And I'd certainly be glad to talk with any of you about a relationship with Jesus Christ uh, and what that means. Second assumption would be God will not lead you to do anything that is contrary to his word or his nature. That's kind of the groundwork that we're laying here is this understanding that God never contradicts himself. And, and so if he has said that this is the way it is in his word, then he's not going to uh, work in the opposite way in our own lives. Third assumption would be that decisions made in following God are usually not based on a whim or an impulse, but on prayerful, Holy Spirit-guided wisdom based on God's Word. So, uh, you know, sometimes we say, well, God spoke to me, or God led me to do this or that, and, and, and really we're just kind of operating on maybe a, a selfish impulse or something we ate for supper or something out of the ordinary and and those things we need to be especially careful of and and um, uh, i would caution us to go running off in a particular direction saying that that god led you in this way when you really have not sought him and prayerfully uh, line that up with scripture and, and talk to others. You know, there's a whole process that we would go through uh, to really sort out some of those things. And, and so there needs to be a sense of God's wisdom that is applied here and not just uh, running off in, in any direction. In the passage that are, is before us, there are some helpful phrases here, some helpful phrases. And, and as Bethany read through that, you may have noticed that there were several uh, phrases that were repeated. And those things just kind of give us a sense of what's going on here. So uh, there are the children of Israel wandering through the wilderness. Of course, that's the, the context here. How do they know when to go, where to go, uh, when to stay put, and, and everything there? Well, this, this really is a good guy. Let me just pick on some of the phrases that are here. For example, in verse 16, this, this phrase, so it was always, the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. And just that little phrase, so it was always, is a reminder that it, there was consistency to it, that this was something that uh, they could count on. They, they wouldn't be looking at the cloud and, and then the clouds start to move and and they say, okay, we better go. And then five minutes after they start packing, the clouds stop again. It, it, it was consistent, it was reliable, it was something that could be trusted. And of course, that is the way God's word is. Uh, there is consistency to his word, and he, his word can be trusted. It's a good, good phrase here. The next one would be this command of the Lord, the command of the Lord. Uh, that's how they knew how to move. And it, that phrase is repeated several times in this passage. They would move at the command of the Lord. They would stay put at the command of the Lord. Uh, it, everything they did was according to the command of the Lord. And that's, that's helpful because it wasn't just uh, one person kind of deciding, uh, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're not going to do. 
even though Moses was the spokesperson, he was the leader, uh, ultimately they moved or they stayed put on the command of the Lord. That is so helpful for us. If we want to uh, walk with the Lord, if we want to be obedient to him, if we want to be accomplishing his will, then it needs to be his commands, his word, his instruction that we are relying upon. Uh, that, that's critical. That is so helpful here. Then the last phrase that I'll just mention, a couple of times in verse 19 and then 23, it mentions the charge of the Lord, that, that what Israel did during this time period was they kept the charge of the Lord. Now, what, is, what does that phrase mean? Well, it's talking about being uh, watchful and guarding and protecting it. And so if, if this is the instruction that God had given them, then the people paid attention to that, and they kept that, and they uh, were on, on guard with one eye kind of always looking to the sky to, to know, are we staying today? Are we leaving today? What, what's this going to look like? And so there was uh, not this um, forgetfulness idea of, well, the cloud hasn't moved in, in 14 days, so why would it be any different today? I'm not even going to check, and, and we'll just carry on with our own life here. No, what they were doing was they were ready and aware, and, and should that cloud um, begin to move, they were, they were on that. And, and so it, that's a helpful phrase there, too. Okay? So those things are just good Bible study methods when we're trying to understand what, uh, what is being emphasized in Scripture. We look for those things that are repeated. We look for those things that are kind of directional or that kind of guide us a little bit as we're in this. Okay, so with that then, um, the passage that, uh, that we're looking at is pretty easy to understand. There's not huge doctrinal issues that come up here. There, there's not, um, it's, it's not a lot of ambiguous names or places that are being mentioned as sometimes you find in the Old Testament books where you kind of get lost in in some of what is happening, this is uh, pretty clear and pretty direct. And so from that, we're just going to share some advice that I trust will be helpful to you as you are seeking to uh, follow the lead of the Lord. So let's uh, now jump into that. Uh, you can probably guess my notes here. Again, we're, we're keeping things as simple as we can as we go along. When God when God calls you to go, you should go. When God calls you to go, you should go. Very well done. And, and that is, uh, just makes sense. Uh, if it's God that we're seeking to follow, then when he gives us a clear direction, then we should follow that. Even, even when you would rather stay. And there are times that, uh, that God may be calling you to um, take on a new venture, to take on, um, you know, a, a new area of serving him and what have you. And it may be out of your comfort zone and it would be easier for you to stay. But even in that example I've just given is moving into the area of uh, where there isn't as much certainty and there is some unknowns and some questions about that. But let's think again of the very clear examples that Scripture gives about, um, <clears throat> about walking with the Lord and being obedient to Him and abstaining from sin and, and pursuing righteousness and, and all of those things. And so when God tells us to pursue those things, it might be more comfortable for us not to and to stay um, mired in our, in our ways of sin but he's calling us to move beyond that. And God is able, he's, he's not going to call you to obey him in a particular area without also giving you, providing you the strength that you need to walk with him in that way. And so uh, just remember that, that, that he's going to help you, even though you may feel 
uh, alone at times. He is going to walk with you. So when God calls you to go, you should go, even when you would rather stay. And then secondly there, even if you don't know where or why or how you're going. It's, it's this reminder that we don't have to have all of the answers sorted and we don't have to know all of the details. He, he's made it very clear that we should walk with him in this way and therefore we, we want to be obedient to that. And, you know, an example might be of, of someone who, um, because of a sinful situation that they have been walking in, uh, they are not even sure how to move forward, whether it's an addiction issue, whether it's some kind of just a, a lifestyle or pattern that they've been trapped in for so long. Uh, you may not even know how to get going in the right direction. Well, you start with the step that you're on, right? You've heard that advice before. You, you don't always have um, enough light to see right to the end <coughs> of the journey, but you have enough light to see the next step. And so you take that next step, and then the next step becomes clear, and then the next step becomes clear, and, and so forth. And so I would encourage us to be willing to follow God to go when he says to go. A second point here would be when God calls you to stay, you should stay. And that, again, is, is not very complicated. It's pretty basic. But I just want us to think about that for a little bit. Uh, when God calls you to stay, you should stay. Even, even if you would rather go. Even if you would rather go. And what can happen is we get impatient. Uh, we, we struggle, and the grass looks greener in, in a particular location or in a, in a particular uh, different line of work or um, in a, an area where you, you just it's something you've always wanted to try and, and you want to do it. And so God may be calling you to say no to that and just to stay put, even if you would rather go. And I would say, even if it feels like you're not accomplishing anything, even if it feels like there's nothing good happening here. You know, I think about these Israelites as they wandered around, and, and if you look at the map and see where, where they journeyed to, sometimes it, it seems very aimless and pointless. And of course, what God was doing was, was giving them opportunity over and over again to rely upon himself to to stop uh, trying to do it themselves but to rely upon him and of course he he used different forms of judgment even in that whole wilderness experience as well but i'm sure at times it felt like it was kind of a pointless journey for many of them well god has a, a way of making something that we can't see as being worthwhile, being very worthwhile indeed. I know of one particular church that uh, was just uh, trying to um, update some of their technology, and uh, they, uh, they thought they'd go ahead and get some new equipment, which included a camera, and which included a, a few things that they hadn't previously had at all. And then just, just a few weeks after that, just a couple of weeks after that, it was when the whole shutdown thing happened and they began to live stream their services then. And, and so, uh, you know, they didn't know how that, those uh, the technologies were going to be used just a short time later. And yet God uh, certainly knew exactly what was going to take place and prepared them for that. And there may be things that you are doing in your life and say, I don't see any point to this. Well, hang on. You're, you're not the orchestrator. You're, you're not the grand designer. God is. And so he may have things in mind for you that you are not even aware of yet. And what he's calling you to do is be faithful in, in these little things right now, even though you may feel like you're wandering around in the wilderness. So when God says to go, you should go. And when God says to stay, you should stay. There's many other helpful verses throughout Scripture. 
and I just wanted to draw your attention to a few here. In, in Matthew chapter 4, um, it says, Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. And so that's just uh, when Jesus was calling the disciples to himself, that's an example of how that went. It was immediate, and notice that they left their boat, uh, which was their, um, their career, their, their uh, income. They left that, and they, and, and they left their father, it says in this particular verse in Matthew. So they left other people behind as well in order to follow Jesus, in order to be obedient to him. So that's an interesting one. Then in Romans 8, it says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. And this is the, the pattern of the Christian then, uh, is that we are people who are led. If you are running your own show, if you are, are uh, the one who's always uh, in charge and, and you think that you're the leader in every situation and nobody else has to tell you what to do because you're at the, the top of the heap, so to speak, then you need to be reminded that the whole pattern of the Christian life is about following and it's about being led by God. And so uh, for the Christian, then, we have the Holy Spirit who indwells us. We are led by the Spirit of God. We belong to him. And that is uh, a helpful thing. So then also in Galatians 5, it talks about if we live by the Spirit. In other words, if we have been saved by the Spirit of God, we have life by the Spirit of God, then let us also keep in step with the Spirit. And this would be walking with the Holy Spirit day by day. And, and it should be this alert, uh, aware kind of, uh, of life as well, just as in the wilderness. They're watching that cloud. Is today the day to move? Is today the day to stay? And whatever the case is, we want to walk in obedience to the things of God and to follow him in that. Well, this raises some helpful questions. At least I hope they're helpful for you. They're certainly helpful for me. Um, what specific things, based on God's word, do you believe God is calling you to do? And, and uh, I won't ask for audible answers. Uh, what I am looking for here is, is a little bit of personal reflection time and just encouraging you to, to think through uh, what it is that, that, from God's word, you believe that God is calling you to do. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a money thing that the... Uh, um, earlier illustration pointed out, and maybe maybe you know that God is calling you to use your money for his purposes in, in a very specific way, and you just need to be obedient to that. Or maybe it's a, a, a different way of reaching out to someone, or a different aspect of loving your spouse, or, or serving your family, or, or you fill in the blank. Uh, there are many things that God is calling us to do. You have probably thought about some of those things as I was uh, speaking. Second question, how have you sought the Lord in prayer and study of the word? And so this is uh, really taking it to that place. Then, if, if we say that we are being uh, obedient to God and walking with him, then boy, we sure need to be in the word. We sure need to be in prayer. Uh, if we want to hear those, the still small voice of the Lord, if we want to be faithful to him, we need to know what he's saying through his word. And so that's extremely important. Third, what excuses are we using to keep from walking in obedience to God's word? And um, there are, are reasons why we say we can't do this or we can't do that. And uh, how tragic it is when, when we allow some... Uh, temporal things, uh, things of this life to keep us from truly walking freely in obedience to God's word. There would be many testimonies of people who have said, you know, I thought I could never let go of that thing, but when I did, I felt so free to be able to serve the Lord, to be able to walk in obedience to the Lord. There was just a real sense of freedom that came as they were no longer attached to that thing. And so Whatever it is, what excuses are there uh, that we are using? 
Number four, will you follow God's leading? That's just a yes or a no question. And sometimes we say, well, I'll think about it. Well, that's really a no at that stage. Uh, well, I will if. Well, that, that's really not part of the equation either. It's just a simple question. Will you follow in obedience to the Lord? And uh, I trust that the answer that we will give to that will be yes. Then lastly, how will you follow through with your decision? Since there is this matter of, uh, uh, we feel the conviction, we, we sense what God is saying to our heart through his word, and we, we're aware of that, well, then it's a matter of just following through with that decision. Then, been a lot of times that people have committed to the Lord in, in the pew in, in a church service or something, and then, and then really just forgotten about it a few minutes later and carried on with life as normal. And that's not where we want to be as individuals who follow the Lord. We want to be uh, truly obedient to him, not just in word, but in deed, and, and carry it out. And so may I challenge you to do that. And I would just say as we close this portion of our service that if you are uh, making a decision for the Lord and if, after you prayerfully think this thing through and, and study it through, if there is a decision that you are making to follow the Lord in, in a particular area, uh, share that with somebody. I would love for some of you to uh, share with me this week uh, through text or phone or whatever uh, just how the, how the Lord is leading you and you are walking in obedience to him. And I would encourage you to, to share that with someone. Well, those are some thoughts from that passage. And uh, I'm, I'm encouraged as I read that, as I study that, first of all, to know that God is leading. And secondly, to know that he provides a way for us to follow him. He's not going to leave us uh, behind. He truly is leading us on. And so I'm going to pray together, and then we're just going to transition to a time of communion. And so I will lead us in, in what that looks like here uh, this morning. Let's pray together. Lord, may it be that within each of our hearts there is a renewed desire to serve, to follow, to live for you. We do not have a particular cloud in the sky. Uh, we do not have an, an audible voice in the, in the same way that they had that uh, in the Old Testament. But we do have your word. We do have the certainty of your nature and character. And Lord, we want to be faithful in obedience to you. And so I pray that whatever it is that you are speaking to our heart about, an area of obedience in which in a way that we can follow you then lord i pray that we would be very deliberate to walk in obedience and if it's somebody we need to talk to if it's something that we need to do if it's a if it's a situation within our own heart or within our family within our workplace within our church family whatever the application is lord I pray that we would be willing to follow your word. And so thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen.